Hello and welcome to today's NetBiz Live demo. Today we'll talk about the impact of packet loss and round trip time on throughput. Before, let's define what throughput is. Throughput is the amount of data successfully transferred between a source and a destination host. This value should not be confused with bandwidth or like data rate, which is the maximum throughput achievable on a network or link and is generally established by the media and encoded technologies. So for instance, you could have a link or a network that is 100 megabit per second, yet the throughput be inferior to that value. So there are three core metrics that affect the throughput of a TCP connection. Round trip time, which is the time that it takes for a packet to go back and forth between a source and a destination host. Packet loss, which is the percentage of packets not received or received malform at the destination. And maximum segment size, which correspond to the amount of data that can be sent on the network without being acknowledged by the receiver. The Matis equation well described the relationship between these three values and how they affect throughput. More specifically, the Matis equation states that the maximum throughput achieved by a TCP connection can, can be calculated by dividing the maximum segment size by the round trip time and multiplying the result by 1 over the root square of P, where P represents the packet loss. So let's see how this plays in real life. Uh, I've done a stage a very simple lab uh, for you to demonstrate this. Um, I'm using for this the uh, NetBeast dashboard and the iperf ad hoc test. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm running a throughput test between two agents um, from a data center that is a virtual visa to a wired uh, agent. Uh, the uh, data rate between uh, uh, the two is set to 100 megabit per second. That's the link they're connected. But of course, the throughput might be lower. So you can see that right now uh, the, um, the uh, network condition between the two agents is optimal. I don't have, uh, here I have my virtual agent. Um, as you can see, uh, this virtual agent doesn't have uh, a really packet loss. Uh, the latency is optimal, right? Um, very good overall. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, measure the throughput between these two units without uh, any packet loss and very low latency. So I click a, uh, on the ad hoc test for 10 seconds with the TCP option. So it's going to transfer transfer as much as much uh, throughput as uh, basically the network and the NIC can sustain. And as you see right now, uh, the throughput between the two is around the 93 megabit per second, which is fairly good measurement, right? And here you go, 94 megabit per second. So throughput is really close to the data rate that the two agents are uh, connected to the network. But now I'm going to introduce uh, a packet loss on the network. Uh, I have uh, a little script that is adding packet loss on uh, one of the two endpoints, which is the virtual data center agent. So you'll see here soon the packet loss uh, being uh, um, recorded and uh, detected by NetBees, especially in the short term average. You'll see that the packet loss will start increasing. Here I select 15 minutes. So um, I'll give it like uh, a little more time to see how the packet loss will affect now the throughput between the two units. Um, for this, uh, the way I introduce packet loss in the network, I use a TC or tr Linux traffic control, which is a, a, a utility that can run on any Linux host that allows to manipulate the network queues uh, within that host and introduce things such as traffic um, packet loss, increased latency and so on. So it's a very good tool to test uh, the network and uh, some failure scenarios as we do here in this instance. Um, we have also a blog post on our blog on netbeast.net slash blog that shows you and explain you how to use the Linux traffic control. Uh, so just look for netbeast traffic control as I'm doing now, netbeast traffic control. There you go. I have already in my history and here you can see the script exactly that applied to uh, add, uh, I believe, a 5% uh, uh, packet loss on the network. There you go. 
All right, let's go to the dashboard. You see that uh, we are already like uh, triggering an error for um, packet loss. So I'll start now my uh, iperf TCP throughput between the same endpoints that were able to go with optimal network condition to transfer 94 megabit per second in throughput. And this is to demonstrate again through the Matisse equation how packet loss uh, can really affect your TCP throughput. There you go. As you see, the packet loss that I introduced, I believe, was uh, between 5 and 10 percent. And look how much the throughput between the two hosts has decreased. Pretty, pretty, um, a very high number. I'm going to now remove the packet loss with my script. And uh, you can see that soon the NetBees agent will then uh, detect that no more packet loss is happening. And uh, um, and of course the throughput will be clear. Um, there is another script uh, now uh, that I'm not executing in this uh, demonstration, but it's very similar that it increases uh, the uh, latency between uh, the two agents to 200 milliseconds. And you can see also that condition will affect your throughput as it did for packet loss pretty much validating the Matis equation that I described before. I hope this uh, video was uh, helpful to understand the impact of packet loss and uh, round trip time on TCP throughput. If you want to learn more about this, uh, feel free to go to our website netbees.net, search on our blog and we also have uh, a PDF uh, under the resource sections uh, that uh, describe uh, how uh, what are the key metrics uh, that affect your end user experience and things like throughput. And this is the, uh, the white paper uh, that is under netbiz.net slash resources. With that, I conclude today's live demo. Thank you so much and have a great week.